was Lee. And that was one of my first things that I actually enjoyed about martial arts. And uh, from that point on, it's just been go, go, go. When I first met Steve, uh, it's 1975, I signed up at JB Lee Studios. And uh, I was lucky enough to witness his black belt test. And I was awed by everybody there that was jumping and kicking and, and doing all the tests that they were. And being a 13-year-old kid, it was impressive. Uh, little did I realize that it would be something I would do the rest of my life. Um, as a young kid, uh, I was always getting in and out of trouble, as a lot of the young kids do. So my parents thought it would be a good idea if I took martial arts for the discipline. And with the shows on TV like Kung Fu, uh, I used to watch that a lot with my father. And I was impressed by the way the lessons that were taught with it. And um, one of the other things that I really liked about it was the athleticism because I never was much of an athlete myself. Um, I tried to catch a baseball and end up hitting me in the head. But with martial arts, it's, it's done in stages. And the progression is really life-changing, especially the deeper you get into it. Um, as for me, uh, I started with any of her kids. They would be going to their classes, and I would come along, and I would participate. And then uh, we would try to copy kicks and wrestle around, and play fight and do stuff like that. I started that kind of thing when I was 10 years old. And then uh, I would kept asking for lessons, but my, my folks would say no because I had uh, I wasn't disciplined enough for it. But uh, as it turns out, the lessons really helped out. It really helped me grow as a person. Um, and then uh, I used to love doing the aerial kicks and all the fancy kicks like that. But uh, I had Meniere's disease, which is part of my hearing problem. Um, so I was born deaf in my left ear, but as a consequence, in my uh, mid-20s, I, had, I couldn't do the spinning heel kicks anymore. I, I can't turn real fast without vertical issue. And so I had to quit doing all that kind of stuff, so that's when I started getting into uh, the knife, the stick, the boxing. Um, I gravitated towards Aikido for a while, uh, wrestling, and uh, but the main thing that stands out with how key was a kick going in style, and that was most impressive to me. Um, but as these things went on, it actually worked out to be a blessing for me. And uh, so now, uh, as a result, I have my own school, and I try to teach people personal protection. And it, it's all the accumulation of things that I've learned, uh, especially people with challenges. If they're, they're busy, they have lack of confidence, um, those kind of things, physical challenges. Uh, emotional challenges, so I've gravitated towards that end of the martial arts spectrum. Uh, so I guess you really wouldn't call it traditional. Um, but as for Steve, working with him, one of the main things that stood out to me was how approachable he was. You could walk up to him, and he was kind, and he was always willing to help, always had a good answer, and what it really boiled down to is you have to want it, you have to want to work hard for it. Um, and when you watch somebody as naturally talented as Steve do stuff, you have to chuckle because he made it look so easy. But, uh, you know, he worked hard too. But I, I didn't get to see those formative years of himself. And uh, as we were growing up, of course, he was running the bar. He started to go into the bar business, bouncing and that kind of thing. And uh, so that was from 21 on for me. And the things I had witnessed in the bar, um, almost like a movie set sometimes. You know, his, his, he always gave the person an out. And if they didn't take it, well, of course, he has to do a job. And um, he did it well. And I remember back as a kid, uh, Steve was in the studio, and a guy came in to challenge him. And, uh, you know, of course, Steve, Steve had to oblige him. So he started to go sparring really, really slowly. And the guy was getting more and more aggressive. And, uh, I remember watching Steve throw a slow motion spin heel kick and hit the guy in the jaw and broke his jaw. And uh, again, we have seen this as a kid, uh, as far back as I can remember. But the guy was upset after that and, and you know, he tried to make legal trouble for Steve. And, uh, you know, but the lesson I learned from that, Steve was a lot of control and was, you know, again, kind. And that's what, that's what always stands out to me is uh, the way he'll give a person an out. But at the same time, if, if you know you cross the line with him, then he'll end it right there. But uh, and his, he's always had his confidence to him. 
you know, the very kind and peaceful confidence, which is kid, that's impressive. Uh, it's also a good guy, you know, he was paid. And he was kind at the same time when you walked into the gym, you know, uh, you know he, he didn't have a ton of roles, but you had to maintain, you know, courtesy and respect for other people. Um, and then um, the main curriculum, the bell levels were white, yellow, blue, red, and black back then. Um, and practice always started out with uh, doing holds and uh, let me spark. Um, and Steve would try to teach us multiple opponent stuff from a kickboxing standpoint, which was a lot of fun. He had games like the gauntlet and that kind of thing. You're surrounded by people and you stand in the middle and somebody gets a number called and you got to do something. Uh, that's a lot of fun. And in fact, I, I, a lot of the stuff that I teach in my school, uh, this stuff, this idea of see it, I taught me. And they work. And Steve's directness for martial arts, he's, uh, he's not into the fanfare or flash, he's into effectiveness and directness, uh, which is cool. It, it, it cuts out a lot of the wonder of how something's supposed to work. And uh, the difficult part was trying to emulate Steve, he's a big guy and a small guy, so you have to find that middle road where you can try to apply what he's saying. And that's the endeavor through your life, you know, as, as you're training with him in the martial arts. But uh, very good, you know. Um, and then other escapades in the bar, there was a shooting. Uh, he was sitting having a beer and some guy walked in the back of the bar and opened fire. With, I don't think it was a large caliber gun, but uh, at that time, the guy left and I ran after him sneakily to try to ID the guy and see who it was. And I, I did. And I, I got back to the bar, and I think he was a little upset that I, I did that. But uh, through it all, we were able to go to court and put the guy in prison. Um, you know, it's just things like that that just happen. You know, and, and the crazy thing about it is, is through there's a there's a comfort level of training with a guy like that that you know you don't freak out when something goes, like that goes on. You stay calm, you face your fear, you breathe, you relax. You do, you do what's necessary. You know, I got a lot of that from him as well. Um, and then as, as the years went on, um, he wasn't teaching very much at that time, working the bar. I mean, he would, he would um, come and go and, and teach people, but uh, a lot of times, you know, we would say we're gonna work out with him and we wouldn't show up. <laughs> of course, that didn't make him happy. Um, and then Farber still go to the gym and then, um, Steve was pretty much working the bar full time and getting into that business more and more. And then I remember when Farber took over the school and, uh, you know, Farber was done a wonderful job with, with uh, his endeavor with the gym. And the interesting thing about that original location was for me, uh, Master Lee was there and Steve was there and then Farber was there and then uh, Master Chang Si Wong was there, who was another upkeep teacher I had. But it was all at the same location, which was kind of bizarre. Um, even though it changed ownerships, that was a top kid school for a very long time. So it's kind of cool when you drive past and I think now it's a cringe or, or something like that. But uh, a lot of nostalgic memories. You know. And uh, Master Lee himself was a character. You know, uh, my very first day in the gym, you, know, you got your white gi on, your belt, and, you know, feeling good. And he puts an apple on the head and takes out a sword and puts a blindfold on it and cuts it out. You know, and, uh, that was an experience I, I had to show my eyes. I couldn't watch it. You know, but you feel the upper pieces fall over. And, and then I realized that, uh, wow, there's a long road ahead of me. And, uh, and of course, I got into the sword end of it for a while, too. Um, but, you know, all in all, at, at the end of the day, I, I feel very blessed to have, have had all the teachers that I've had, especially Steve. Um, I believe Steve has been the most approachable person for me. And then, as, uh, you know, I've always had the hearing problem, so when I was lucky enough to learn how to speak as I was growing up, um, read lips and uh, sit up in front of class sometimes with headphones on, and then this year, the sound started going away. And not for me to catch anything, it has to be more rumble, or, you know, or that kind of thing. But what it's taught me is to persevere. And, uh, you know, again, that's in line with training in the martial arts. You, you persevere, you stay on the road like that. Um, of course, you have to change things physically, you know, like I said, no more spinning and jumping, which was one of my favorite things to do, you know. Um, but uh, now it's, it's, 
it's evolved to a, a whole way of thinking, a whole way of life. Uh, I can no longer do a lot of things I used to be able to do. But on the same token, I can do a lot of things now that I wasn't able to do then. So um, it's, been, it's been an interesting thing. You know? uh, and now, Steve, Steve it's 60 years old, is uh, every bit as impressive now as he was when I met him. And uh, his evolution with uh, his training is, is he's had so much reality based altercations in the barn on the street. Um, and that's what's, that's what's honed his confidence and his skill to such a higher point. Again, the directness of taking care of business right then and there. And, um, you know, when you put it all together and I ask myself, what have I gotten out of it? A lot. You know, again, I take my lessons from the martial arts and when I went into any kind of a challenge, I always remember, you know, don't quit on yourself, don't give up. And Steve's the one that instilled that in me. You know? So I had a deep gratitude for his guidance you know, when I was growing up. Um, and then now it's wonderful to see him out to studio here at Farber's gym teaching. You know? And he's, that's, his, that's his home, that's where he's comfortable. Um, and no longer in the bar business. So, and that's good. You know, you don't need to be doing that stuff at 60 years old. <laughs> you know? But outside of that, I'm just, I'm just going to keep going with what I do. Um, try to reach out to people with challenges. Um, try to work with people that are being psychologically being, you know, whether it's a mugging, a rape, or a shooting, a traumatized, a home invasion. Um, that's where... I like to go with stuff because it's more of a psychological thing. And then when you do it through the reality-based training, um, not so much like MMA, but with you know, facing your fears and trying to show people a, a vic being a victim to mindset. You know, as being a champion is just a mindset. But you, know, you, you take those kind of things and you can, you can really plug it into a person's mind. You, you really improve their life. You know, and to help other people also helps me. Because um, I was always the kind of kid who stuck up for, for people who didn't beat up or bully or that kind of thing. But at the same time, I really didn't care too much about what somebody did to me, as crazy as that might sound. Um, so, you know, I, I only hope that I can be, uh, you know, half as influential as Steve has been to me to, to people that I train. And teach and come across in my life, man. And the best part about all this stuff is you never learn. There's no end to it. You know, because also, too, as you age every decade, something changes in your body. <laughs> and, you know, you have to address that. There's, you know, I can't do stuff at 25. And I, there's no way, you know. And being 51 now, uh, you know, I, I've, I've taken away all that, that stuff. And I try to teach people movement uh, from a defensive perspective. Because in sport, uh, my mindset on this is, you have to be aggressive, you have to go get the win, you, have, you know, you're competing. But uh, in the real life altercation, you can't necessarily throw the first punch, you can't be the aggressive, that kind of thing. So you know, want to start from a defensive perspective. And then from there you can grow, but it's a, it is a different mindset. So, and as, as opposed to, uh, and getting in the ring and uh, you know doing your best for I guess for competition reasons for win the money get the belt you know that's never been important to me I, I never understood much of it in the first place and I never cared but to be able to actually help people that have been knocked down by life that's cool you know when you can get in some somebody's head and, and say hey you can do this you don't you don't have to look at it this way try this and Steve has the same approach you know. So that's, that's a good thing. You know? And I guess we have to, at this point, we have to wait for him. <laughs>